Okay, so today you're going to be learning how to mix your resin properly. Start off with some kind of container and set of scales. The particular type of resin that I use is a two part mix. Um, two parts, part A to one part, part B, as you can see here. Which means that I need double uh, the mix of part A to part B. So first you're going to measure out part A. Today I'm going to do a batch of roughly around 300 grams of part A, which will mean that when we add part B, you will need approximately half of that amount, so 150 grams. It's okay if it goes over a little bit in these larger batches. It's not going to affect it too badly. So in order to make your resin have as little amount of bubbles as possible, I heat my part A with some water. See? So we get your water. Mine happens to be reasonably warm. And I sit that in there for about five minutes. We want that to be nice and runny and all of the bubbles to have surfaced. So let's come back in five minutes. So five minutes has passed, and as you can see now, the resin is a lot runnier, and a lot of those bubbles have now surfaced. So now we're gonna add our part B. And if you remember, we added 300 grams of resin. So we're now gonna need 150 grams of the hardener part B. You can use more than one cup. I tend to do it this way just to reduce the amount of waste that I have. Um, so take time if you're going to do it this way because if you go over the amount too much then it's going to mess up your mix. Okay so now we're going to stir our mix. I've got these silicon spatulas which I bought off of Amazon. I'll pop a link in the description so that you can get some yourself. They are great little tools. Um, the silicon peels off of them really quite easily and they work really well. So you're going to want to stir continuously for five minutes making sure that everything is evenly distributed and we'll come back in five minutes when all of this has been mixed. Okay so now we're five minutes later and as you can see the resin is now nice and clear. I'm going to leave it alone for five minutes so that it can allow all the bubbles to rise to the top. So we'll come back in a minute. So now that it's been left alone, I'm able to pour the excess resin into different cups to do what I want with it. On this particular occasion, I needed to create some black resin to pour onto the back of a piece that I prepared earlier. This time I chose to use acrylic paint to do that. Now acrylic paint can leave your final effect a little grainy, so normally I would advise to use resin colorants that are a strong pigment that don't contain any large amounts of pigment. They're much better, especially if you're not used to mixing your resin thoroughly. Less is more in this case, um, always start with a small amount of pigment and work your way up to a deeper color. Uh, if you're looking for a truly solid colour, then you will need quite a lot of pigment in order to do that. Um, but as I say, less is more. Again, once you've finished mixing your resin and you've made sure that all parts of the pigment are completely and thoroughly mixed in, you're going to want to leave your resin alone for another five minutes to allow any of those bubbles that you've reintroduced to rise to the surface and then you can blow torch off any of them that have risen up there and get pouring. Thank you guys once again for joining me today. I hope I have managed to answer some of those questions on how to create a great batch of resin. If you'd like to follow me for more content then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us a little like and leave a comment below on any more videos you'd like to see soon. Bye for now.